Hi, it's Esther from The Trucking Scribe. Today we're working on slow stitch. These are just a few examples of what I'm doing. So I hope that you enjoy this and let me know what you think of these slow stitch ideas that what I'm doing is using them for toppers on my on my journals so I mean they look really cool if you're new here thanks for stopping by really hope you enjoyed the video if you like it hit the like button leave me a comment please let me know what you think if y'all are interested in more of the slow stitch hand quilting embroidery kind of stuff to go along with the jump journals and to integrate all that together but thank you and once again enjoy the video so in my internet I discussed some new stitching that I have come across and it's called slow stitching Misty Co makes she has a wonderful YouTube channel that I kind of got this for, well not kind of I did kind of get did get the idea of, to make this from her. She has a scroll that's just rolled up like this and just continues rolling that she did on a class. So what I have done besides that, I made, I took some fabric and some batting and I just stitched it onto these little pieces. This one doesn't even have batting. This one was from Amazon. So I got these on Amazon, not Amazon, on Etsy. And I'll put a link. I can't remember the where I bought them at. But these are just sewn pieces of fabric. I think there's three in there, four. And they're just sewn together. Well, what I did with, this is one of them. I just put my fabric on top. Both of these are. So I got ideas from, from those. From Misty, who did, I mean, her work is beautiful. I, and I'm, these colors right here are working really well. You can check my Etsy page. I have more already uploaded of these that have some of this that's decorated where I sewed extra patches and stuff. I just put my own little twist. I put little stitches going different ways and French knots. There's a lazy daisy. I just made a spiral and I, I've just set them on my books to give them dimension. I mean, you can still pull these up a little bit on the edges and they're going to fray a little as they go. But this is um, these two I made for the toppers on here. So you're definitely going to have problems keeping up with needles if you like me. This here is another example that I had grabbed. These two are my favorites. I'm going to put them on covers. And it's just a single stitch. So you do not need batting. I have some. It does give it a different look. So let's say I want to make this the back cover. So I would just kind of get a rectangle going here, maybe a little straighter one. See, here I go again already. And I don't think I need that big of a piece. I 
which I might when I get done. So you could take your journal and measure it. I kind of like that size. So I'm just going to trim that off. So if you have batting, you can lay it on here. And you can use any kind of thread. Embroidery floss. I have these. I have regular embroidery floss. I bought these. They're kind of this is the whole set, but and they're kind of expensive, but they are amazing. I love these Sashiko needles. And then also after I bought those, um, I forget who it was. One one of the YouTube videos showed this one. One lady, I'll have to find her, and it is like two strands of embroidery floss. So, but it doesn't come apart. You don't have to pull it apart or anything. So it works great too. It's thinner than the Sashiko. I don't know I'm saying that wrong. Right. But, so what you do is you take, on these little ones, I, do, I don't usually, I don't necessarily um, baste it down. If I baste it, I would use this thinner all-purpose thread. So what I did here, I don't even need this side if I'm so I can trim that off. I tie a knot. This is the quilter's knot where you take the end of your string and the end of your needle and they're pointing together. Take and hold that string right there on the needle and circle it. I do two times. You can do one or you can do three. And then you're just pinching that little knot in your hand and pulling it. And there it is. So to get this started with this little bit of a piece, I am going to... Basically, you can rip these. I found this one. It can be used in this. I said these are all scraps of fabric that I had. That one's a little too big. I do want a little bit of red in here though. So what you can do is you can lay it out like this to figure out where you want it, how big you want it. So I kind of like that one. You can take a picture of it. You can use a glue stick and just put a little bit of glue right here and hold it down. You could take a big running stitch in it. You could even start and just do the big stitches. So I'm going to go in from the back. See, that one's already coming off, so I'm just going to sit it right there. So I'm going in from the back. Up through the top back down and I'm going to come up right here I know black is not the best color to see this is it so I'm turning a corner I'm just deciding that I'm gonna stitch that right there and then I'm just going over a little bit And I'm doing like um, making 
see where I'm, I'm, I'm going in right here at the top part of this but I'm coming out over here so I'm on the back I'm going at an angle see if you can see the back no. And if you notice, I did that one completely wrong. So I'm just going in and then back up for this stitch. It's just a simple little in and out stitch. It can almost be called a buttonhole, but that's not the buttonhole stitch. As I've been researching, and I've done embroidery since, uh, not a lot of embroidery, but quilting and embroidery since I was in high school many years ago. And it's changed, the names have changed. It used to be embroidery and ribbon embroidery, silk embroidery, um, all kinds of stuff, cross stitch, which I think is still cross stitch. But now, as the world is growing, we're starting to see other names like Burrow, B-O-O, B-O-R-O, -O, right here. This is actually, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's the stitches that where you're patching it. And Sashiko, Sashiko is the technique. I'm not quite sure at the moment how that I'm going to look it up and see if I can figure out more but it was used in in the old days to repair oh well, I'm not thinking good this morning to repair clothes people didn't have money to go out and buy new clothes so what they would do is they would take patches and they would just patch their clothes up like this. And as they kept patching it and putting more and more, it got heavier and thicker, not only from the fabric they used to patch it, but also from the thread. So what I'm going to do now, I'm leaving this one like this. I may come back and do some more. I'm going to poke this in right here, and I'm going to travel. You see... I'm just traveling with my thread back there. Okay, I'm gonna put the rib on there, what not? See, if you forget, if you haven't sewed it down, you can take a picture. It might help a whole lot. So being like me. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a running stitch. And I got the wrong needle, so it's taken me a while to figure out which needle I want to use. You can go in like this, one at a time. You can see I've got smaller stitches, bigger stitches. And I'm just going to slide over just a little bit, and I'm going to go back the other way. And you can do like this. You can just load the stitches on your needle if you want to. My hands aren't as strong as they used to be, so I can't load a whole lot on my needle. And I'm going to slide right on over to that little edge right there. I'm going to go back. So, even though this stitch is the same as this one, it's where it's placed at that makes it look different. These two have been made from the same stitch. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to travel down to my next spot which is going to be this one. I think what I'm going to do with this, maybe we'll do some X's. So I'm going to come up right there. And then I'm going to 
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and do an X. See where I'm coming back out at? And then what I do on mine, I, I am, I just go down to the bottom of that one. And I come over, kind of line this up right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I just make another X and I go down a little ways and I come back up. If you don't lose your thread. So depending on which way you're holding your thread to is, or your piece can help you with your stitching. I turn mine. And then when you get right here, I just make a little, I wrap my thread around my needle one time and pull it through. That gives me a little knot. If I was on the front, well, let me go to the front. I would go through here. I'll show you on the next one. And kind of bury that in there. If you white, let's try the yellow. I know I'm going wild with the colors here, but you can see over here I've used different colors on these. Just whatever shows up whatever even if, if it don't show up you may want your work to to show up you may not so once again threads pointing this way thread in the needle and we're going to take that thread and hold it with your finger wrap around two times and then pinch pinch pull your thread a little bit pinch it and pull it through and there's your knot. Let me see how crazy this is going to look. But, you know, this gives it that actual handmade feel of using what you have. So, so you run out of white. You didn't have nothing else but this yellow. You would, you would use the yellow to fix your clothes and go on. And not think a whole lot about it. So right here, I'm going back the other way. I'm going up. I'm just doing a cross. And I'm coming back up in that corner right there. Probably not doing a very good job of explaining. And I'm going to go back down right here. Back up at the next one. I'm going to go down there and go across. Once I get started, I kind of get a pattern. I'll go back where I came out of. I think. And I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to go across right there. See? And I'm going to go down here and come back out where I started from. So you're using your thread to add another dimension to what you're making. And adding color and texture. Instead of using paper, you're using fabric, which can be definitely be used in a scrapbook, a junk journal, scrapbook, any kind of writing so let me know if you need me to go back over the cross stitch part of it see i just went way on over that one missed that one that's okay we're just gonna go right there i was talking i wasn't paying attention so
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie the knot. Right. I'm taking and doing my threads like this, and I'm going to go under and in that hole and pull. Usually I have my needle on it, but pull it out. So here's my little knot. I'm going to go in right here. And I'm just pulling that little knot through there. And then you can, if you have a backing on it like my other ones, you can just weave this through the back. Let's see. Let's do some red maybe. And I'm curious to know if you might want some of these up in my shop, like these little pieces here. Leave me a comment and let me know, because it, it doesn't take a long time, especially when you're sitting watching TV. Well, it does take a while, but you know, it doesn't seem as long. I'm just going to go and finish up my little X's right here. Need it to there, so I'll go down. Okay. So that's my cross stitch. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it right there. And I'm just going to come up. I'm, I'm behind right now, right there. I'm just going to come over here. And all I'm going to do is just an in and out stitch. Just like that. And you may choose that you want to do some background off the fabric to give it more dimension. You may want to do this. You can go on a straight line. You can go crazy. Have it all going different kind of ways, like this, like a confetti kind of thing. And that's just giving it more interest. And like Mystic of Mystico Makes, she said she is a maximalist when it comes to needlework. So for her, the more thread, you can, you can just keep going and going. And I encourage you to go and watch her garden um, scroll series. It's about, I think, six or seven. But she does a great job explaining the different stitches. So that is basically what I would do. And I'm going to come back up. I'm just going to sew this down to the end. I hate wasting this thread, so I'm just going to continue on. If you're a quilter, and especially hand quilting, they would do, and at one point, back in my late 20s, I could do 10 stitches to an inch or more or less, and they look halfway uniform. Nowadays, my hands 
or two that I guess as you get older your hands lose strength and considering I haven't <laughs> done it in a while but it is very meditative and you can just sit here and put your stitches in and say I'm not taking that out it's in there now even if it is too big or too small or it's a little crooked and you just learn to accept your work because you know what nobody else is going to be able to make the same stitches you make that is one of the things with my mom's quilt yeah I can I can quilt a quilt just like it probably use the same designs but it will not be the quilt that she made and that gives that quilt that much more value because she made it and she made it with love and care and you know she's she has taught me and my sisters my children grandchildren that even if you can't see if you got the the willpower I guess to do something the want to do something like this that you learn how you you learn those skills and so this one I would prob I would fold this back and trim this batting or you could let's see let me just turn this one over you could put it on there like that and have that as a um, as another dimension. So that's that's how I would put it on. Maybe not that big of a a thing, but you know, you're you're still going to be covering up some of your stitching. So you could turn it around and put it this way. Same thing with these. I know it doesn't go with color, but, and these are just scraps. This here could be a whole front topper, and then you just start adding your, your lace and stuff. I'm, uh, I'm having a lot of fun with these. So, this is the quilted with the batting behind it. This is the non. I don't know if you can see. There, There is a different feel to the fabric this has like four layers so it's a little bit thicker because it's got the Sasiko stitching behind it of those saris I think it was saris that it came from and if you count there's three layers they, they take their old clothes and sew them like this to make blankets and other clothes look how pretty that is you could just follow the little leaves. And that is something I do in my other quilt. Right here I have, um, this is a cross stitch. So I just took and followed those lines right there. I didn't do it as much on this one, but this right here, I followed these these lines to do my quilting. I did go ahead and do the outside stitching on it. Here I've got what looks like little chicken feet to me. Right there, I followed the, the hatching right here, same thing. This one, I put my lines diagonally going that way. And like in this, you can see my thin thread where I basted it. I should be basting another one later today that, to get started on. Because I'd like to have that for my, for winter time. And these are just so cool. This one I'm going to add more. So just from fabric, you could use your t-shirts, 
old shirts, clothes, blue jeans, and you could just make little things like this. So if you're new here and you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button so you can get notified of when I post more videos. And let me know what you think about this slow stitching embroidery Sashiko Oro. I don't know what specifically it's called. It's something that I find that has been very relaxing to me. I've, I've just said, well, let it go. Crooked, straight. And you can see they're, they're crooked and they're straight. <laughs> so grab you a piece of fabric and a needle and thread and come come along and help me do this. So we could do, I could show you French knots, lazy daisies. This one has French knots right here. This one has a lazy daisy. I don't know a lot of embroidery stitches, but my daughter does. I'm sure I could talk her into get, doing a tutorial if there's enough interest. But thank you again. And have a great week.